What's up guys, Spencer Stack right here, and this video is sponsored by Musicbed. I don't know if you've heard, but they're giving away $100,000 to filmmakers who submit films to the Reopen Challenge. Now when they reached out to me, they wanted to know if I wanted to talk about this a little bit in one of my videos, and I thought it was a really good opportunity to make something for myself and then be able to kind of break that down and show you guys how I did it. So they're looking for films that are basically talking about optimism and the future, because they believe filmmakers and creators can create change right now given what's going on in the current landscape of our world. You know, I really believe in that kind of cause, the fact that we are creators and filmmakers and we can make change in the world. And recently I met a person named Trey Thaxon in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I got to work on a little project with him. And he, I found him really inspiring. And you know, basically anything that he does when he creates, he tries to do something that's impactful or meaningful. And I thought it was really inspiring. I thought he might inspire you guys as well. So I decided to make a little film about him and uh, what he thinks about creators and how they can make change in the world right now. So I'm just gonna get things started by showing you the film and then when we come on the other end of the film, we can talk about it, kind of talk about my approach to it and the technical details of how I made it. All the things that we have and we use today, they're because someone created it. Or without creativity, everything stops. For Greenwood Ave, it started as a way to celebrate and honor the history of Black Wall Street and the uh, 1921 massacre. But I think it's taken a life on its own. And beyond that, I really want to inspire the next generation of uh, Black entrepreneurs to follow their dreams. That ownership is something that we've done before and that we can do again. You know, spend some nights like thinking about how do we, you know, Fix, fix racism today, like, it's not gonna happen. Uh, or let's fix the world's problems today. It's not, it's not gonna happen in one day. This is not a one time, a one year fixed thing, but we can set the table now for our kids to be better and further along than we are, then I think we've, we've done our part. For creators, this is our time to shine. The world needs to hear our voice. This is our time to get that out there and really create change. Uh, for whatever it is that you believe in, if you believe that it can impact someone or change the world, move on that idea. The world is listening. So like it says at the end of the film, he's got a few projects that he's doing right now, but one of them is called Greenwood Ave. And basically, um, that's just a celebration of black entrepreneurship in Tulsa. What he's doing, you know, you just start off by making shirts basically based around Greenwood Avenue um, in Tulsa. And that's basically what they used to call the Black Wall Street. Um, and so he's trying to use Greenwood Avenue to, to celebrate these black entrepreneurs that used to be there in Tulsa and who are there now. He provides design work for these companies and kind of consulting to help them get going. So when he started this company, he really just started making you know logos and putting those on t-shirts, but then it kind of grew into something more. And now he has a website where he makes films about black entrepreneurs in Tulsa and he wants to spread this all over the nation going forward. Um, and it's just a really cool project that he's doing. So I thought I would talk to him about being a creator and change. So then it was a matter of just making the film and getting some gear together. And then I brought in my friend Keaton to help me out. He's the one that has the Mob OLF. So you guys know that I've been using the ZKIM F6 a lot on the channel as of late. Um, and it's finally time to send that camera back. So I thought I would just get one more shoot in before I did that and test it out a little more. So I shot it in ProRes 422 HQ again in 4K. Kind of like I talked about in some of my other videos. I just wanted to downsample that sensor and get a codec that I could actually use and edit with. Um, and rather than trying to use the raw codec on the camera, you know, normally on this channel I talk a lot about creating cinematic images, images that kind of look like movies. And with this, I want to do something a little different. I wanted to feel a little bit more like a documentary. So I decided to not shoot this one in my usual 2.4.0 cinematic aspect ratio, you know, cine cinemascope. Um, I decided to do this one in 16 by nine, which is pretty fun because it opens up some more possibilities with my lenses. You know, I usually shoot on the Canon FD vintage lenses. And for this one, I mostly shot on the 35 and the 55, like I normally do, honestly. Um, and I try to stay on the 55 as much as I can. I just like the less distortion on that lens on a full frame sensor. Um, and then I decided to use the Black Promise again. You guys have heard me talk about the Black Promise plenty in the past. And I use it for specific projects. I don't use it on everything, but when I'm doing something like this, I thought it would add a nice uh, kind of feel to it and not make it look so crisp. I just wanted things to look a little bit more raw for this video. You know, so we just did the interview right there in his house. And I just thought that would make it a little bit more relatable. 
Um, and then to light that, we, you know, I kind of use the, the windows in the background as motivation. And then I've been talking about getting a seven foot umbrella to start lighting things. And I, I've already talked Patrick Tommaso into one and my friend Keaton into one. So he bought one, so he brought that with him. Um, and so we had an Aperture 300D um, bouncing into a seven foot umbrella, which gives you a really nice, big, soft source and super easy to set up. So we had that acting as our key light, being motivated by those windows outside. And I tried to expose for those windows outside because I don't really like blown out windows that much but I still couldn't balance for it, even with all that dynamic range that the Z cam has. But that was okay, I just kind of leaned into that look. So you know, when you have the black pro mist on your lens, it's gonna bloom those highlights anyways. It's gonna give them a nice vibe and it's gonna make them look less harsh like a digital sensor normally would do when you're clipping the highlights. And then I shot the whole interview handheld just to kind of give it that raw, more documentary feel. You don't have to move around too much, just a little bit, just to kind of add that little human element to it. Um, and I shot with a 35 millimeter on this just to kind of get really close to his face and to get really intimate with him, really feel the emotions when he's talking. And I was running audio into a pretty wild setup actually. I recently just got the Rode Video NTG mic in and I wanted to test that out, but we didn't have the right cable for it yet to run it all the way into the camera. So I ended up using my Rode Wireless Goes and then attaching that to the NTG, which I'm actually using right now. You can see this here, <laughs> doing the kind of same setup. I've got the Rode Wireless going into my Fuji X-T3 right now. Um, so let me know how this sounds. This is, I'm getting better at audio, but I still have some troubles with that. And actually we had troubles with this because the problem when you're doing this, using the wireless kit and a shotgun mic and then running into the camera is that you have three places to change the audio gain. So you have the camera audio gain, you have the levels on the Rode microphone, and then you actually have the levels on the Rode wireless. Um, and so my camera was reading that all the audio was good, but the actual, actually the wireless go was running hot. And so um, the audio clipped a little bit, but luckily, you know, I've got Patrick Tommaso around and he uh, was able to fix the audio for me. Thank you, Patrick, for doing that. If you haven't seen Patrick's channel, definitely go check it out. And he actually did a workshop on sound with Moment, like what I did for the cinematic lighting. He did one on sound. So if you actually wanna go check out our workshop, he actually has a whole section in there on audio. And I have a link to that in the description below. So then it was a matter, once we kind of got that interview done and we were moving on, then it was a matter of going and filming some B-roll in the city. And for this, I wanted to kind of challenge myself and kind of get out of my box a little bit. And so I decided not to shoot handheld. And I'm not a big fan of gimbals, but I do like steady cam. And so I decided to borrow my friend's glide cam, which I thought would hold the Z cam and be able to balance well enough. Then I can get some nice camera movement, some nice smooth camera movement for the rest of the piece and not just walk around with the camera. I just wanted to kind of add just a little bit more production value to the piece, which was a challenge as well. The glide cam wasn't perfectly balancing with the Z cam on there because we tried to put a remote follow focus on there and a wireless system and a monitor and uh, you know the V-mount battery so it could the power everything, but it wasn't super easy to do. But so what we ended up doing was actually taking the V-mount battery, flipping it upside down and mounting it on the back end of the glide cam to help balance it, which worked really well. Well, and then rather than using any wireless kits, we ended up just using the iPhone app. Like I've talked about in my other Zcam videos, we ended up using the wireless iPhone app to pull focus and it actually did pretty good. There's a little bit of latency, but it never actually caused any troubles with focus while we were filming. If you see any misfocuses in the video, that's just because Keaton messed it up. Sorry, Keaton. We had the regular tilted nucleus as our follow focus. And we had that attached to the focus gears that I have on my Canon FD vintage lenses that I've modded myself, which I've done a video over as well. So using a glide cam without a vest is always gonna have its challenges. You're gonna have to, so there's gonna be a little bit of shake in there. You can see in a couple shots, the 50 millimeter is a pretty long lens to be using on a glide cam. And so every once in a while, my arms get a little shaky because of the weight. And you can see just a little bit of shake in the background, but with a little warp st stabilizer on top of the glide cam, most of these shots look pretty natural and kind of just floaty and that just helps me get some nice camera movement with the footage. And then I wanted to frame things a little bit differently. I wanted to make it just a little bit less straightforward. And so I kind of played with some framing, shooting in the mirror, shooting through glass, kind of giving a lot of headroom. Um, and then just trying to show off Greenwood Avenue on the shirt, you know, just give some context to the story. And we actually went down to Greenwood Avenue and filmed around there. You know, there's just a piece of history right there in Tulsa. And it was, it was really cool just to go down there and get to see that firsthand. And then we went over to this coffee shop that Trey's been working on. So. What's really interesting about Trey is that he's an artist, right? But he, you know, he has a little bit of his little advertising firm, and he his background is in graphic design. But he uses uh, his visual brain to do a lot of different things. He doesn't just make 
You know, he doesn't just make logos, but he also makes t-shirts. He also designs spaces. And then he also is now designing the visuals for this cafe that he's working on with another on another project. So we went to that cafe that was being built and we, and we kind of put him in that space just to give some context to the film. And then we showed the renders on the computer, which he kind of dreamt up before the space was built. That was pretty fun too. There was kind of some dust floating around in there. And then we tried to recreate that by just grabbing some wood dust and sprinkling it in front of the camera. You know, and the whole point about making this was to make something that was inspirational and hear from someone that is a creator that's giving back to the community. And that's basically what Musicbed wants you to do. So if you want to enter into this film challenge, go out there and make something that inspires you or you think that can inspire other people or, you know, advocates for change in today's society or, just something that makes you feel optimistic and good about life. Something that can just make us think in a different way, different perspective moving forward. I think it's a really awesome opportunity to make something like that in this time. And on top of that, if you enter it in the Music Bed Reopen Film Challenge, you can win. Well, they're actually giving away a $25,000 grand prize, a $15,000 grand prize, and a $10,000 grand prize um, based on these judges' choice. And then they're also gonna do 50 other winners that get $1,000 for entering. And that's just really awesome that Music Bed is trying to push us as creators and get us out there to make something that can uh, provoke change in the world. So just a full heads up, the last day for submissions is July 15th. So that's coming up pretty quick here, but I know you can make a film in that amount of time. I know I just made this little like one minute, 15 second film, but it only took me one day to make. So you can definitely get out there and do something in a short amount of time and really push your skills and see what you can come up with. And then definitely send me the films on Instagram or something so I can watch them um, when you submit them. I'd love to see what you guys are creating out there. Well, that's it for me in this video. I'm Spencer Sakurai. Until next time, guys, see ya.